Yaakov and his brachot, Lama Dalet, Amma Bain, or 34B3 in the out scroll, and whatever it is in that book. Okay. <laughs> So Amar Rav Chia Bar Ava Amar Rav Yochanan. So Rav Chia, the son of uh, Abba, said in the name, as uh, well said in the name of, or uh, due to his Rebbe apparently it was Rav Yochanan, says Kol Hanaviim Kulam, all of the prophets, Lo did Nabu the El of the Baalei Tshuva, they only prophesied. Uh, about uh, to the Bali Teshuva, to a person uh, for uh, for the Bali Teshuva, for the people who are masters of return. Again, I always have to emphasize that in the Talmudic language, a Baal Teshuva is not what we call a Baal Teshuva today. Uh, uh, the Baal Teshuva of those days was a person who was started out religious, went away from the religion, and then came back to the religion. Hmm. That is who we're talking about. In modern day parlance, yeah, a Baal yeah. Teshuva is a person who is never religious and becomes religious. Hmm. That's why you, when you go to schools for Baal Teshuva, that you're going to uh, like Or Sameach or Eish Torah or any one of the other uh, places out there. So what happens is those are beginners. And they don't know anything about the Torah. They have to be given... Uh, uh, introductory courses, so on and so forth. The original Baal Teshuva was not like that. Like I said, they went, they would have gone to a Tel Yeshiva, they would have learned, or whatever Yeshiva you want to pick on the world, they would have gone, they would have learned, everything would have been wonderful, they would have walked away after all that learning for whatever reasons they have, and then they would have come back. It's sort of like the Amish, what do they call it? The Spring, Springa? Springa. Springa. Where well, they go off for a couple of years and then they come back. Yeah, yeah. Okay, if they come back, they're Bali Tshuva, and they, and as a result, that, that has a very big impact on what we're going to say. So you have to have the right definition of Bali Tshuva in the Talmudic language. And again, it's somebody who knew, who was observant, who was following Torah, then leaves Torah, does whatever they're going to do, and then again has some uh, another revelation and comes back to Torah. So the prophets, according to Rav Yochanan, all the, the prophets only prophesied on behalf of the Baalei Teshuva. Hmm. Gemorim, but when it came to the Tzadikim Gemorim, the complete Tzadikim people who never went away, so then it's, uh, they, it's, there was no problem for them. They weren't prophesizing for them. Hmm. Why? It says, uh, because it says, Ayin lo rata elokecha zulatcha. So that, uh, the uh, reason is because, the, the, but it's, it says that no eye except yours, O God, has seen. So it's only talking about the uh, Balashuv that the, again, when the people are, Prophesizing uh, uh, to about the Bali Shuvah, not the Sadiqim, because nobody, it's not about reward, the, the reward they're going to get. So, let me see, anything else here? Okay, let's go on. Let's get some more places in. It says, So, you're going to say, Wait a second. The, the the reward, they only have to, the prophets only have to tell about the reward of the Baal Shufa and not of the Sadiqim, because the, the Sadiqim, the Gemorim, have such a great reward that is un, unknowable. So he says, I have a problem. It <laughs> says, Bamakom, there's a famous statement. Bamakom, Shabbat Teshuva Omdim, Ain Sadiqim Gemorim Omdim. We have a statement in the, in the Gemara that says, in the place where the Baal Teshuva stands, a perfectly righteous person cannot stand. What would that emphasize? Who's better? Baal Shuvah. Baal Shuvah, right? You would think that Baal Shuvah is better. If you go to the Toma Devora, it says that the person who, uh, the reason that this statement is made that uh, in the place of the Baal Shuvah stands, the Sadeh Gemor cannot stand, is because the Baal Shuvah has to go through so much more headaches to get back to where they were. They have to climb our, <coughs> he gives you the, the imagery of the hay. The hay, how's the hay made? A dalid, and then you have a vav. But you have an opening between 
the, the, the vav and the top of that. So you have the little opening. So it says, the bo- why is the bottom opened? So, you know, it's the bottom of the hay. Why is it opened? So you have to picture like a courtyard where everybody's in that courtyard. Well, if I, anybody who wants to, they can sin. They can leave the, uh, that, that hay, if, if you will. And they can go into the world of Shekhar and everything else and they can have fun. Okay. Now, if they leave and they want to come back, they can't go back the same way they came in. What they have to do is they have to climb through the top of that hay and they have to work through penance and so on and so forth to get in. Now, once they've done that, they've worked so hard that that's what it means in the place of a Baal Teshuva, the Tzadik Gamora doesn't can't stand because he never had to climb that way. Okay? So the, the Toma Devora makes it very nice. Mm-hmm. It's a beautiful thing that the Baal Teshuva is so important and that's why it says it. So Rabbi, Rabbi Bahu is saying this, he's asking the same thing. He's asking on this, on uh, Rav Yochanan's statement about the prophets giving all of the, uh, the reward for the penitents, but not the, the, the Balei Tshuva, but not for the righteous. Mm. So what happens? It says, and uh, you're at the bottom of the page, Dan, so you probably have to flip it at this point. It where it says, Shnema, Shalom, Shalom, Rachok, the Karov, the Rachok. Okay, so it says, that peace, peace to the far end to the near. The Rachok, that's the next page. The Rachok, Bereisha, Vahad, the Karov. First, Hashem extends his greetings to the one who was far and then repented, and only then to the one who was near all along. So, what does it mean? That apparently, again, in the place that the Bali Shuva stand as a positive, God's going to greet them first. Hmm. Okay, fine. That, that's what it seems to be indicating. Uh, we went through the English the last time, right? I gave you the whole thing about the Messianic era last time. I believe I did. So the article is hearing here that the level of the penitents is so exalted that and this is what we're talking about, that no one else can stand in their division. Penitents, Bali Chuva, are superior because it is harder for them to control their evil inclinations than it is for the perfectly righteous who never became accustomed to sin. In addition to the preceding reason, the Samai de Chaye offers two others. One, the Gemara in Yuma states that if one repents out of love for Hashem, even his sinful deeds are treated as meritorious. By the way, that's the beautiful thing too. Okay? A person sins, and then they do teshuva. Are they doing teshuva out of Yerat Shemayim or out of Ahavat Hashem? Where are they doing it? There's and the difference would be, am I doing it out of respect for God or out of love for God? If I'm doing it out of respect or awe for God, so that my sins are not wiped out. My sins are uh, not, uh, I'm, sorry, the, I'm sorry, my sins are not treated as meritorious. Hmm. On the other hand, if I do it from love, then all the sins I had, all those McDonald's hamburgers or fries and Cokes uh-huh. or cheeseburgers, however else people like to have, all the Bruno's pizzas in the world, <laughs> uh, uh, Papa Gino's, whatever, okay? Uh, they turn into merits. Hmm. So if you really want to do truth the right way, you're doing it from out of love. It's very hard to, I don't know how hmm. you're really going to determine that, but that's uh, yeah. hmm. that's uh, more of to a than us. So furthermore, a penitent, uh, it's a Baal Shuv has fulfilled the mitzvah of repentance, which the Rambam counts as one six hundred thirteen mitzvot. Whereas one who is always righteous lacks that mitzvah. Okay? Oh. It's an amazing thing too. If Teshuvah is one of the mitzvot and I never did anything wrong, Ooh. so I can't not fulfill that mitzvah. Wait, wait, wait. Don't we say that everybody has to do Teshuvah for something? It's, you've done some little thing someplace. Even if you're FFB, right? I mean, somewhere along the line. Because you want to say, Ain Adam Ain Adam made below Nobody dies without sin. Okay. So the uh, the answer would be some of the, even if he, even if it would be uh, uh, an off color glance at somebody. You know? right. So the the answer would be then if you but if you're at Sadiq Gamor, apparently there were uh, Sadiq Gamorim. You would never apparently there was something like that. 
Wow. So those people <laughs> were above the the, uh, wow. the cycle. Okay. And therefore, they didn't do anything. Wow. <laughs> if you look at Moshe Rabbeinu, what, what was Moshe's headache? That he became the leader. If he didn't become a leader, he wouldn't have had the headache. So if I'm not going to be a leader, I'm just going to live in my Dalai Lama, my, uh, my own places. Uh, and I'm going to surround myself with only positive things and, and people who are, the environment is Torah, Torah, Torah. Uh, the, odds, the odds are that I could grow. And I, I mean, I'm in that growth pattern and I have that sort of personality. I could very well see that or envision that you could have a, a tzaddikim. It would be a lot of hard work, no question. Mm -hmm. But it was, uh, I could see that happening. As opposed to if I'm in positions of leadership where it's very, very difficult because of all the different people you have to deal with, yeah. Yeah. that you can maintain everything, including not even hinting to Lush and Hara or whatever it's going to be. It's very, that's when I could see the problem or the anger involved in, uh, you know, no matter how much you could try to control your anger and, and, and knowing that Bill was an expert teacher, I have to assume even for Bill, there were moments in his classroom career that he got upset. Am I correct? Yeah, you know, I was going to say, you know, when we studied the Talmud Devorah, right? That as you, the higher you get, the more difficult, the the more strains there correct. are, the correct. more temptations yeah. and so. That that's <coughs> that would be correct. What I'm saying, right? Mm -hmm. That when you were in the classroom, you you had your stresses, and I'm sure there are times that. You had to release a little bit, at least, if nothing else. But certainly, we know you had stresses because your the chiropractor said, or your doctor, or whatever, was, you can't lift it because you have so much tension. And <laughs> as you rise up, you have you you put more, you have more standards in place. That Correct. You want to meet. Correct. And then you're given more responsibility, so constantly. Right. You see that with people that you know it's it would be, like i could give an example it'd be very easy to live a very uh virtuous life if you were a farmer down in the amish country right. and had no contact with the outside world yeah there are no temptations because there, you don't okay. see it. so there you go so like, like i said oh. that that's oh. you could you oh. could you have situations where you could be at Sadi mm -hmm. you have it yeah. and so according to that if you if the person can really do it so then they, there's nothing to repent yeah. for, if you will. So yeah. at that point, he doesn't get to fulfill the mitzvah of teshuva. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I don't think we have to worry about that personally. I think everybody here can, <laughs> can certainly fulfill this mitzvah. Okay. Including myself. Surely myself. The Kuriya Marim suggests that a penitent, having been deprived of a sense of God's clo closeness for so long, mm. may have a greater thirst for spirituality than someone who's always righteous. Oh. Now here, this oh. is clear, okay? Mm. If a person is as religious from birth, mm. has been doing it all of their lives, they have that connection and they sometimes are bored with the connection. There's be, they become complacent, not bored, but complacent. The Baal Teshuva is excited about it. That's why when you, uh, if you, the, there was a famous story that in Lincoln Square, Rabbi Riskin, who was a rabbi from Yeshiva University, he went into Lincoln Square, which was the star, the, not the starship, the, uh, what, what do you call the, the synagogue that becomes the model for everybody, like the, uh, some sort of ship. I forget the, the is flagship. Fla flagship. The flagship. It was the flagship of the conservative movement at one time. Ah. The conservative? Uh, conservative movement. The Lincoln Square was a, a flagship. It was right in the middle of. It's right in Lincoln Square in New York, in, the, in yeah. Manhattan, and it's a very big show. And the conservative, the conservative ruled over there for a little while. What happened was very quickly. What happened was. The, uh, the rabbi retired or quit, whatever it was. So they called up, this is many years, many, many, many years uh, ago, long before I was even thinking about being a rabbi. Oh. Uh, it, what happened was, like I said, so they called up JTS, the Jewish Theological Seminary, so the story goes. Uh, 
and JTS sent them down a, a, a candidate. They interviewed him. They did not like the candidate, so they called up JTS again and said, send us somebody else. JTS's response was, and they were very tight in those days, what do you think this is, a supermarket? We sent you the person, that's what you're going to get. Ooh. And they said, no, we don't want them. Then you're not going to get anybody else. Ooh. So the guy said, fine. He called up Yeshiva University and said, we want a rabbi. Whoa. Yeshiva University knew there was conservative shul. They had a problem. We can't send our rabbi to a conservative shul. So, uh, and they would talk to him on the telephone. So they came to some sort of agreement and, and uh, they said, okay, we'll send, because in those days, the Yeshiva, YU would send people to a non mechitza shul. In those days, they were still doing it. Huh. I, don't know if they, I don't think they're doing it anymore, but certainly in those days, they were, because they were trying to get back some of the shoals. Oh. Okay, it was, you got us out, we'll get you out, oh. fine, that sort of thing. So what happened was, Rabbi Riskin, uh, they liked Riskin. Uh, Riskin went down for the interview, and they wanted to have him. He, now he has a problem. He, he, can't, he doesn't want an Amachit to show himself. So he asked Rabbi Salavet, again, this is all how the story goes. Wow. Uh, I'll leave it to Rabbi Riskin or anybody who's listening to really verify the facts. But the, uh, they asked Rabbi Salavet, he asked his Rebbe, Rabbi Salavet, Yoshebir, who we were learning uh, on Thursday nights. And, uh, and we all know that Rabbi Salavet was against any show without a mechitza. It's clear. He said, you cannot dive in a, in a show without a mechitza. Conservative, no good, but period. So they asked, he asked him, and the Rav said to him, you have, you, can, uh, you, can, you have two years to put that mechitza up. If you don't get the mechitza up, from whatever level, you need to leave the show. You're going in to change it, fine. You, right away, you cannot use the microphone. He gave him a whole bunch of rules. Ooh. That's what he has to do. Ooh. All right, he went in, and as history has it, he turned that show around. Two years later, wow. he got the mechitza up, and wow. now it's the flagship of the modern Orthodox movement. Wow. Still, I think it still is. That yeah. and probably the one in, in Memphis, Tennessee. Oh, uh, Baron Hirsch. Bar uh, Baron Hirsch, right. Ooh. So those two are the giant wow. uh, success wow. stories. Uh, but they, but that's what happened. Baron so Hirsch in, used to be conservative? No. No, I'm just saying he has the Baron. largest... He had the largest... the largest show. Orthodox in the country. Right. So I'm saying that was... Uh, <laughs> I've, what's his name? Um, I just saw him at the convention. Um, um, rabbi. Um, yes, Rabbi. Gross, Grossman. 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 There you go. It's Rabbi Grossman. Very nice guy. Uh, but he he did what he did. So again, you have two flagships, uh, one on the east coast, one on this coast. <laughs> <laughs> hey, there's no coast here, but okay. <laughs> in the middle. In the middle on the lake. The middle I can tell you. Yeah. But it's. Um, well, like I said so. Let me get back to where I was. Uh, how to get into that? <laughs> so, his show becomes the uh, the draw ticket actually for Balei Tshuva. Ah. His show was very big into into uh, getting everybody to. But how to get into Lincoln Square? I'm trying to get into Lincoln Square. Besides the story, got so lost in the story already. The, I got lost. The fact of bringing people back. Okay, so I'm guessing that's what it was. So he, yeah, so yeah, that, that was an example of. Oh, okay, good, change. good, good, good. So I, I know I was, I went through the whole story. I forgot where the point was already. But you know, that it's much more difficult right. to come back okay. yourself, but also to bring other people. Right. Even uh, more so that's what he's. He brought everybody back, wow. and like I said, it's a tremendous show these days, and uh, he. That's where NJOP comes from, the National Jewish Outreach Program. Ah. That one, Crash Hebrew, Crash mm -hmm. History, all these things came from that one synagogue. Mm. That, wow. that, that whole thing, that this whole tshuva movement that they were doing, wow. a lot of it comes as a result of that. But it was also showing that one person can change the whole place. <laughs> it's an amazing thing. It's almost like that concept of creation and recreation. Right. The, the, the powerful right. part of of God is re keep creating constantly the mm -hmm. universe and people. Oh, this is how I got to. Okay, fine. Now I, I remember this comment. Okay, so now what happened is, so this place turns all religious, right? And so now you're religious, and they're still bringing people in. 
So one guy gets up at the dinner. I knew I had a reason ah. for saying this whole story. <laughs> one person, get, the president gets up at the dinner. It was a dinner honoring the show for 25 years, whatever the Mishigas was, okay. <laughs> and so he said, and this guy had guests every week at his house. He lived in, the, you have, in New York, you have towers. Yeah. So you have to, okay. Now, they also have, I have to go into a whole bunch of stuff here. Again, I hope, don't let me let, get lost. Remember <laughs> dinner, okay? <laughs> so what happened was, <laughs> what happened was in New York, because of the tower, you live in towers, they have what's called, known as a Shabbos elevator. <laughs> Where the the elevator stops at every floor, regardless on Shabbos. No, it, uh, you don't no have to press buttons. buttons. You don't. Pre you just get in, you get out. Some people are for it. Some people are against it. I'm not getting into halacha uh, in, in here. Okay, I'm not going to get into what is what is. I'm just saying it, it it exists. So this guy would want to. He lived on I think the 20th floor or the 15th, whatever it was. So he would get on the elevator and go up. It would take him a little while, but he would get there. <laughs> what happened was, so, but when he would bring the Bali Truva home, the people who never experienced Shabbos, they knew that they want, they were, you know, like, let's get back to the earth type good people. I don't want to take the elevator. I always take the elevator. Let's walk up the stairs. <laughs> so, he said, so he said to them, I just remember the 25th uh, anniversary, and the, they're talking about the Bali Truva and everything else. And he gets up and he says, I hate Bali Tshuva. <laughs> I hate Bali Tshuva. They, they ruined my Shabbos. <laughs> he said, when I used to go home, before I would bring you Bali Tshuva home, I would, I would dub in, it would take me a half hour, I would go to my house, I would go to my apartment, I would go in my Shabbos elevator, I would go up, I'd have a nice dinner, it, I'd be through in a half hour, an hour top, and I could go to sleep. What happens? You guys come into my system. You come to my show, and I kick it out into a half hour. Now you want to sing everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now we have to go on for an hour. I'm hungry. I want to go home. Now I get home, and I want to get in the elevator. And what do you do? You say, I don't want to. I'd rather walk up the stairs. I want to experience the office. You're the guest. I have to go up. So I have to stop walking. Flights of stairs. I'm out of breath and you're so happy. You're running up. You think it's Shabbos. Ooh, boy, Shabbos. Okay. Then we get to my house. I want to sing and I want to eat. And you say, no, no, no. We want to get again. So I have to go slow. <laughs> and I have to sing a Kiddush. And then you want a Devar Torah. Then you want to sing. Yeah, Crazy. Yeah. You made me really experience Shabbos. Okay, that was the point. You made me experience Shabbos. Oh, you took me out of my comfort. You took me out of my comfort. And now you made me be like you with that same exuberance. Now I have to love Shabbos again. That was the point. So that's his point here. That as long as I'm close, if I've never left it, yeah. I become complacent in it. And I don't think about it. By the way, when you see some people at Shabbos tables, when I went to Shabbos tables when I was in yeshiva, it was, because uh, you always go to the, the, the yeshiva will always set you up with people who are, you know, <laughs> excited. So what <laughs> happens is you get to see the Divrei uh, Torah at the table. Nobody's speaking about sports. Nobody's uh. speaking about uh, stock market. They know that they shouldn't do that. Whether or not they do it when I'm not there, I don't know. But when, at least when, when I was there, when other guys from the yeshiva were there, they didn't do that. They made sure they sang songs. They made a very joyous atmosphere because they wanted to show you this is what Yiddishkeit should be. Fine. When I started to go into the firmer world, where they no longer <laughs> saw me as the Baal Shuva, now I, they assume me as a from guy. Now I see the real world. <coughs> in which, different Torah? It's a nice thought, but it doesn't really happen. Yeah. We're talking about baseball scores, or we're talking about stocks, or we're talking about the problems of day schools, or yeah. whatever we're talking about. Yeah. Singing, if we so desire, somebody's going to sing. Otherwise, it's not a forced thing. Or somebody mumbles under their breath, and the others are talking. Ah, yeah. Okay? Now, I'm sure that, well, <coughs> you yeah, don't yeah. know I'm talking. You, you, you can't, you may be able to figure out what I'm saying, but it's not, it's not the joyous atmosphere that, the yeshiva would have wanted me to think of. And I saw that, and you have to adjust yourself. And I, when I, but when I first saw that, I was a little shocked because I was thinking, yeah. what happened? What happened? Where's the disconnect? Yeah. Why don't I want, to do, I, I want to do certain things, but they don't want to. I don't force it, never do. Uh, but it's, it's strange.
It was a strange thing, and, I, and that's when I understood. Because you've never not experienced Shabbos, you've always had this, mm. you become complacent in it. And when you become complacent, it loses a luster, like anything else. And only when, and that's why when from people, they go to gateways, which is the, the outreach for the, for the from people, I think. Oh. It's, uh, it wasn't originally, but that's what it turned into. It, they get excited again. Because they see this is what Shabbos could have been like. Wow, I missed this. The wow. spirituality is tremendous. Blah 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 blah. And again, that's part of this. Is this part of the problem in in uh, in Orthodox shuls in why uh, on Shabbos, particularly in the in the back of the shuls, is only talking about that? Yeah, yeah. It is it's so, a the line is so complacent. Well, I can talk right now because he's just repeating the Shmona Esrei. Well, my friend just walked in. They know they're supposed to be listening, but they talk anyway. Right, no, that, that's complacency, right, oh. because they don't need to hear it. The rabbi speaks, they walk out for a kiddush oh. club oh. because they don't need to know what the rabbi is saying because the, the rabbi is just going to say it. a little devarto, which, which they know better than he does. Yeah. So, you know, and while you don't have that in the church, I'm sure. <laughs> right, but that's the same thing. You, the, same, the people who are coming in for looking for spirituality in the church, they're appalled yeah. by what other people are doing. And they're saying, how can you do that? Now, from everything they tell me about church, I thank God I never went to, I, I can't <laughs> tell you, but it's, uh, I don't really have any into, uh, desire, but it's, from what, everything I've heard, they're supposed, everybody's pretty quiet. Now, I don't know, you have, it, that's what they always, the parents yeah. of TV, because you have the parent, they're going on the kid's head. <laughs> okay, what, <laughs> when I saw that, that. But there's always this concept of quiet in, in, in an Orthodox show yeah. or in a conservative or reform show. I shouldn't say, I haven't been in reform for a uh, Reform were very quiet. Reform were quiet. Because yeah, uh, like they, they like decorum. After they church, like, yeah. They like decorum. Yeah. But conservative, yeah, they're talkers. Yeah, they're talkers in the back already. And in Orthodox, you have the talkers in the front. So. <laughs> <laughs> we're very we talk whatever we want to talk but it's uh but there again it's a complacency yeah, because yeah. the people when people come in looking for that spirituality they're appalled and we don't get it mm-hmm. what what are you appalled by what's your problem yeah cool off you know you it must be a you must be new to religion yeah yeah <laughs> and, but that's really what it is so that's why again if they become if that speaker would become that that disengaged person suddenly becomes re-engaged mm. it's a stimulus for everyone right so what happens is that person cannot i can't since uh, if a, not me if a person who never was disengaged he won't be able to he won't be able to understand why that why that person is going so crazy just mm. like by the way on the other side of this a smoker you have a oh. smoker who becomes a reformed uh reformed smoker. Uh, and I was a non-smoker. Yeah. They are the most, uh, what do you call it, Milit, mili, uh, <laughs> militant, militant people. You can't do this, you can't do that, no smoking, not only no smoking, but no smoking in the restaurant, no smoking in the bus stop, no smoking outside, no, <laughs> no smoking. Because <laughs> I can't smoke, you can't smoke. That's really what it is. There's nothing else there. It's pure <laughs> disgust. For the other, because they know that if they if they are around around the cigarette, they're still going to want it. That's really what it is. So they become militant against it. And if they don't, by the way, they're the the militants. For all these militants out there, they're the ones who are going to start smoking again. They protest too much. Right. The ones who don't become militant, they're the ones who are successful. <laughs> because just quiet. That's all. They they say I can't smoke. You can do what you want. And, they're, and they said to themselves, they're not trying to change the world. They're not going out there and giving speeches. Mm. Those are the people who will never smoke, never drink again. It's not a problem for them. The, uh, they may have a problem, but it's not going to, it's not going to, uh, they're not going to fall. The other ones will fall because they're just out there, out there, out there. And they're trying to get everybody to be on their side. Sooner or later, they're going to fall again. So for all those militants out there, you should know that it's not going to last. They'll just be uh, yelling for a, little, a long time. That's all. And then they'll fall. 
That's how you. That's how. That's at least how it seems. Yeah. What you, what you you just explained is a good example of the Yitzur Tov and the Yitzur Ra. Right. The, as tempting as it is with the Hebrew words, that it's not just good and bad that you need both of these because they, you know, these these people that are coming back, they give you that. You get to see that excitement mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that lifts everyone up. That that it's not just good, good, good to ascend. Right. It has to be that back and forth. Mm -hmm. Right that takes you up. The, the sad thing, the only sad thing you have in the Balch of a world is that the, the, uh, the from world, the religious world, who has never gone the other way, okay? So what happens is when they see that exuberance, first, they may like it, they may like it at first, then they'll try to mock it because they don't want it. Ah. They don't want it. Makes them uncomfortable. Makes them very uncomfortable. You get out of your comfort zone. And that's what this speech was, that was what the speech was about. I hate you, Bali Juva, because you made me excited about it, and I didn't want to be. I was complacent. I was happy where I was. Everything was going well. Everything was going well, and, you, and I hate you for that. Now yeah. you made me think about it again. But that's really what it is. You, be, you want to attack them. And again, that would cross religions. When you would, if you would, I guarantee that's you. human nature. Right. I'm happy where I am, and I'm happy you found your place, but don't preach to me about it. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to see it. I just want to come in, do what I do, and get out. Uh -huh. And when you're going to torture me, I'm not going to like it. Even though, really, my neshama wants it. My neshama wants to grow. Mm -hmm. and, but my Yitzhahara just wants to say, ah, he's an idiot. Uh -huh. He's going to fall off. He's not going to be going. He, prison he won't be here. Don't worry. Okay, that's your Yitzhahara, Yitzhahara. That's what it is, but it's it's an amazing thing that when we see somebody excited, engaged, we try to we try to mock them, make fun of them. So like if you're in a workplace and everybody's kind of comfortable at the pace they do the ah, work, right. and then you get this new employee that's a ball of fire, and he sets a new standard. Of how right. Hard you, have to work. And you want to kill him? You want to kill the guy? Yeah, what are you making us look bad for, right? Right, right. <laughs> How was that? Boss has been paying us. Now you're, you're doing twice as much. You're making us look bad. You're trouble for everyone. Okay, so let, let's go on a little more. Uh, let's see, let's see so... Okay, so I said that, right? We just said that. Okay, then... So I have to turn the page. I have to turn the page. Okay, that's what happened. So I'm a Rav Chia Bar Abba. I'm Rav Yochanan. Calling the Vim Lo Nitembu El Limon Mashiach. So again, now we're going on to a different uh, set here, where it says that Rav Chia, uh, Rav Chia, the son of Abba, said the name of Rav Yochanan. Call that all the Nevi'im only prophesied about the days of the Mashiach, of all the Olam Haba. But when it comes to Olam Haba, the next set. Okay, of days. Ayin Lorata Elokim Zulacha. That's again where it says that no eye can ah. see this except for Hashem. Ah. Okay. So it's. Oh, that's what happened with this. I knew something was wrong here. Okay. Uh -huh. You're still on 34B4, right? Yeah, you should still be there. Yeah. Okay. So uh, then what happens? It says. A uh, poliga to Shmuel, and this is arguing on Shmuel. The Amar Shmuel ain ben Olam Hazeh. The Yivod Mashiach el Shibud Guliot Bilvad. Where Shmuel said the only difference between this world and the days of Mashiach is the uh, the sub the subjugation of the people in uh, Galut. Okay, in other words, what was that the uh, people are ruling over us? So that's uh, that's all the difference according to Shmuel. That in the times of Mashiach, the the goyim will no longer subjugate us. Sorry. Okay. Shneamar uh, says ki lo yechdal evyom because it says in Devarim and Deuteronomy that the uh, poor the poor people 
will never cease from the midst of the land. So that if they never cease from the midst of the land, even in times of Mashiach, you would think they would. So we see that the only difference is, and this is how the Rambam actually rules, that uh, the only difference would be that they're not going to be ruling over us. That's all it means, according to Shmuel. So if that's the case, then why would the Nevi'im only be talking about the reward of, uh, when they were prophesizing, why would they only talk about the death of Mashiach, but not the times of the world to come? Okay. So Amr of Yochanan, Amr of Chia, Bar Ava, Amr of Yochanan, Kol Nevi'im, Kulan, Lo Nitnadmu, El Lemasi, Bito, Litama Chochem. So here again, this is an interesting statement. He says that, I don't know where, you, where it is in here though, I don't see it here anymore. I'm not sure where it is in here, Stan. I, I'm lost in this book, it doesn't make sense. It got lost somewhere. So I don't know. I only have it in my book. It's not. Do you have it in the, in the Gemara still? Are you following me? So, um, or you lost it too? I'm not sure. Because I don't see, I'm not, it's not on the page here anymore. Okay, so anyway, it says uh, that all the VM only prophesies about marrying uh, his daughter to a Talmud Chalchem Ulaose Brachmatia and to those who do work, to do work the, uh, for the Talmud Chalchem, the Mahana, the Talmud Chalchem, Menachasav, and to gain benefit for the Talmud Chalchem from his possessions. Aval the Talmud Chalchem Atzman, but for the Talmud Chalchem himself, Talmud Chalchem, and for the, uh, these, these students of the law, the rabbis, Atzman Ayan Lo Rata Elikim Zulachat. So then again it says, that the reward for that, nobody's going to see it except for Hashem. He starts talking about Balai Tshuva and then uh, uh, brings this verse from Isaiah, but then he starts giving other scenarios of what this verse in Isaiah Correct. is referring to. Correct. So the Marsha says, when he says to, uh, to marry off his daughter, he says, All these things are considered Sha'amr Aleyhem, so Parabetic Tuvo, which is. Said in the second parak of Shavuotem, Vetem Avichin Ba'ashem, that you have to cleave to Hashem. Vechi Efshar. So the Gemara says, Vechi Efshar. The Daibek B'Shchina. Is it possible to cleave unto the Shchina? The answer is obviously no. El, uh, what does it mean? Was it means Zeh Shemasi Bitol Talmud Chacham? That it means that one who marries his daughter off to a Talmud Chacham is cleaving to the uh, to Hashem. Because uh, the Talmud Chacham is the embodiment of Torah, the Oseh Prakmati, and so on and so forth, and all those things that went with the Kumafarsh. Shalom Chidushenu, like we explained in our Chidushim, should should vacot shalahem avin lidei schar, because the attachment brings one to reward. That is spoken about in Anema uh, Beneviim Shakoch biyad Adam Hagashmi Lahasigo. As the rab, as the prophets explain that the power of man, the of the brings the, uh, the material man was going to bring it to this reward of the Talmud Chacham in the world to come. Who has sechar ruchani? That's going to be a spiritual reward, mamash. She'en kol ayin that nobody nobody can see. Adam esigo rak elokim only Hashem will see it. So who? So bal tshuva. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, okay, so who's uh, oh that's what it is. Who's Khar Rukhani Mamash Bal Chuva? That is the reward of the Bal Chuva in the spirituality. Sha'in I Sha'in Seikh of Aya the Ayan Adam Sigo. What's the uh, nod the the uh, the Seikh <laughs> Um, the mind, the mind, uh, and the eye of a man cannot reach. Rock Elokim only Hashem. Okay, uh, and that's why we have it says we have to wait for the Mashiach. Shuhu at Tamachachem, that he is at Tamachachem. All the Machakilo, the Oto to the Chachma, or he has to wait for him in the signs of wonders, uh, uh, wisdom. Sorry, the Chen called Kama called Neviim. Okay, uh, and that's why it says. 
that the Nevi'im, they only are prophesizing about the days of Mashiach. Sha'az yichyu v'yikimu b'guf v'nefesh l'kabel s'chara gashmi v'shashigu because then he's going to live and the, the body and the soul will receive the, the material reward that, that he reached that the Nevi'im talked about avala olam haba but when it comes to olam haba shuhu olam haneshama which is the world of uh, uh, the souls Haruchani and spirituality also Haruchani Shalem Ein Seicha V'Koach Hanavim Lasikan. That reward, the Marashah is explaining, the Seicha, the, again the the mind and the power of the uh, the prophets, they were unable to reach that. They couldn't get to that level of understanding uh, what what's what was going to happen. Okay, but everything else they could. We'll have to stop there. Yeah. Daniel's here.